If you're a fan of sharks, then I imagine there's not many of you out there watching this video right now who haven't heard of Deep Blue the shark. This impressive female great white shark shook the world back in 2015 when footage from a couple of years before was taken of her swimming next to a dive cage. The video, of course, went completely viral across the internet. It's really hard to not be impressed by her size here. She does look truly massive. She made waves again on the Discovery Channel a few years later when she was shown swimming around a boat and was filmed at depth hunting elephant seals in Guadalupe. And her last possible sighting was in Hawaii in 2019 when she was seen lurking around a sperm whale carcass. Just in case you were wondering, no, this isn't from the infamous Ocean Ramsey clip, but more on that later. Lots of people down the years have speculated at just how big she actually is, and the estimates do range quite considerably. Some say 22 feet, others say over 20, and some have even said that she's only 18 feet. Only 18 feet. It seems ridiculous saying only, because that is still a whopping great white shark. But the question remains, what is her actual size? Is Deep Blue really the biggest great white shark? Welcome back to another Shark Bites episode, everyone. Today's video actually comes as a fan suggestion, but in classic Chris fashion, I have lost the person who sent it to me. <laughs> I get so many comments and emails that sometimes I just lose track. So for the person out there who suggested this video, this one's for you. I do think it's an interesting question to try and answer though, because Deep Blue is probably the most famous real great white shark out there. The most famous is Bruce from Jaws, but of course that shark is not real. I digress. Despite Deep Blue being one of, if not the most famous white shark in the world, she's only been sighted a handful of times. So the estimates that we have for her size either come from the people who were there who saw her in the flesh, or footage and pictures of her swimming around. And it's important here that we stress the word estimate. Because Deep Blue hasn't been scientifically measured, as of currently her size will always be an estimate, but it's still fun to try and work it out. Scientists who would be accurately measuring a large shark species would normally be doing so either on land or in the sea with specialist equipment. So either a measuring tape laid horizontally on a flat surface next to the shark, or with a calibrated paired laser photogrammetry device which basically points two dots onto the animal, and from that you can extrapolate it and work out the total length. First though, how can we tell Deep Blue apart from other large white sharks? Because often that can be quite tricky because eventually when you get to that kind of size, great white sharks tend to look the same. But often the way we identify between sharks like this comes down to their physical markings on the body. In some shark species, unique spot patterns are present on the body that stay the same all the way throughout their lives, for example, in whale sharks. But for the sharks that don't have unique spot patterns, we have to use different features. Some sharks have distinct markings or scars or even deformities that can help us differentiate between individuals. And over the times that Deep Blue has been sighted, we've managed to get a good look at some unique markings on her body that can help us recognize her. The first and best one is a little marking on her right gill slits. So the white patterning juts up about a third of the way up in between her first and second gill slit. And on that white band, you can see here a little gray blotch. It's pretty distinct when you're looking for it. This is usually the best one to use when trying trying to ID her because this pattern will likely be the same for her entire life. The second one though is a notch on her dorsal fin. Lots of great whites have notches out of their dorsal fins, so this one can be a bit tricky if you're comparing her to another white shark that also has notches out of the dorsal fin. But you can see here just below the apex of the fin itself, there's a prominent notch along the trailing straight edge. And this is handy because if you see a picture of a large great white shark that has no notches in the dorsal, then it's definitely not deep blue. And then finally, she has some pretty gnarly scars. The first set runs down her left hand flank and are basically three vertical scar lines, likely wounds from run-ins with other sharks or perhaps mating scars. And then the second is a large oval or eye-shaped scar that runs down her right hand flank, a similar length down her body as the first set of scars. The scars are a half decent identifying feature, but as we know, sharks have incredible healing properties and these scars may change and heal over time. So in another 10 years or so, they might have healed considerably more than what we're seeing in these images. A fun game that you guys can play though after watching this video is to Google articles about Deep Blue and see how many of those articles use images of a great white shark that isn't Deep Blue. Trust me, there's a lot of them out there, so go and check it out and let me know in the comments what you find. Despite what lots of people might try and tell you online, Deep Blue wasn't discovered for the first time in 2015. She was actually first encountered all the way back in 1999 on a shark research project led by Michael Dormier. 
During that encounter, she was photographed by Steve Drogan, a wildlife photographer and ocean adventurer. Back then, she hadn't been named yet and was just considered to be another big great white shark. But at the time, Michael and Steve believed her to be a big shark. Unfortunately, they don't say exactly how big they thought her to be, but if they said they thought she was big, that would suggest she was above average, i.e. above 15 feet in length. Scientific research on the growth rates of adult white sharks is pretty limited because we just don't have the data. But some research has suggested that white sharks can grow at rates of around 25 to 50 centimeters per year. I would definitely take that with a pinch of salt though because we know there are differences in growth rates between males and females and differences in growth rates at certain life stages. It's likely these sharks grow at faster rates when they're younger and then the rate plateaus as they pass sexual maturity. And we also have to consider environmental factors here as well, such as food availability, i.e. if they're able to eat more food, they can reach bigger sizes at faster rates. For example, let's say back in 1999, Deep Blue was around 16 feet in length, just above the average for female white sharks. So choosing a lower end growth rate of around 30 centimeters per year, if we extrapolated that out, by the time she was next sighted in 2013, which was 14 years later, she would supposedly have been 30 feet in length. She was of course not 30 feet in length in 2013, so you can see those NAF calculations don't work. Dr. Hoyos Padilla was the next to encounter her this year, but he wouldn't go on to post the footage of her until 2015. When he did post it on Facebook, it garnered worldwide attention with most media outlets reporting that this was the largest great white shark ever. Dr. Hoyos Padilla can be seen in this footage standing atop a dive cage in Guadalupe, whereby the cage itself is probably around 10 to 15 feet in height. It's really difficult to tell with the perspective from this footage because Deep Blue is right up close for most of it, but we can see how big she is compared to Dr. Hoyos, who pushes her pectoral fin while he stood on top of that cage. Deep Blue then also featured on a Discovery Channel show during Shark Week in 2014 called Jaws Strikes Back and presumably in future years via reruns. The footage from this show was likely taken around the same time as the footage that Dr. Hoyos Padilla posted on his Facebook and again was from Guadalupe. But this time we get some better perspective shots of her swimming next to and alongside one of the research boats in the water. The smaller boat here is registered to be officially 22 feet long. We can see her brush up the side of it and although the angle is tricky, she doesn't look to be too far off the size of the boat. We also get an aerial shot here of her below the smaller vessel. Again, it's somewhat tough to see because we can't quite see the tip of her caudal fin, but she's not too far off. I wouldn't say that she's the length of the boat, but she might not be that much smaller than it. You can see just how tricky it is though to try and get those size estimations from those clips. Sometimes you do have a point of reference in the frame, i.e. the 22 foot boat, but the shark doesn't quite align next to it how you'd like it to. What is going on with my sign? <laughs> I think the batteries are low. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not changing the batteries now. That's a job for later. Anyway, where were we? Talking about points of reference in the frame. Oh yeah, that's right. So those points of reference, i.e. the small boat, it's probably where those size estimations of 22 feet or over 20 feet have come from. It's likely stemmed from her reference to the size of that boat. But we do have to remember here, guys, that this is the Discovery Channel. They have to try and sell a story. And what better story than claiming to have found the largest great white shark ever. Deep Blue's last known sighting came in 2019 in Hawaii. It was here she was photographed by Mark Mola swimming along after consuming part of that infamous sperm whale carcass. We definitely know it's Deep Blue because we can see the gill spot on her right hand side and also the notch out of her dorsal fin. Interestingly here though we don't get a good shot of any of the scars that perhaps we might have seen on either side of her body. But again that comes back around to what I was saying to you about sharks healing and scars perhaps not being the best idea ID feature to use, especially over the span of five or six years. We don't have a zoomed picture, but it's entirely possible the scars on her left side have healed to the point that they're barely visible now. Thankfully, Mark and his friends did keep a respectful distance from Deep Blue when they were swimming with her, although I still probably wouldn't recommend free swimming with a great white shark like this, guys. Someone who didn't manage to keep a respectful distance during their white shark encounter was Ramsey and her team at One Ocean Diving. I've given you all my thoughts on Ramsey before, so 
I'm not going to tread old ground here, but we can see in these comparison photos, there's no marking on the gill slits and no notch in the dorsal. So the shark she was swimming with was actually Hayoli Girl and not Deep Blue. It's tough to see any real size comparisons again there from Mark Moller's pictures. The angles just don't quite line up. You could say that the free divers with their fins here are around two meters in length, and perhaps you could match that up against the shark's body and say, well, you could fit around three of those two meter free divers along the body, which would make her nearly six meters, just shy of 20 feet. You might laugh at that methodology there, but it is a method used by shark scientists, including myself, to try and estimate the size of large sharks. That was how we estimated the size of whale sharks in the Philippines, our known height plus our fins. And we'd basically swim alongside the shark and see how many body lengths we would be in comparison to the length of that shark. It wasn't too bad a strategy for estimating, but it's never going to be exact. Now, we've spoken a lot about estimations today and looked at footage trying to compare her body size to a known object. It's not been very scientific, but this is Shark Bites. We're a science channel. So I decided to get in touch with a shark scientist directly involved in measuring great white sharks. David Burnby is a Swedish marine biologist who at one point worked for the KwaZulu Natal Sharks Board. Here, he conducted measurements on a lot of white sharks and is currently developing a methodology to measure them using models. And this will hopefully aid scientists who are measuring white sharks out in the field. Models are always nice and complicated, but are used all the time in the world of shark science. David is planning on publishing this in a scientific journal, so he couldn't divulge too much information to me, but here's what he said. During his time in South Africa, David conducted a lot of biometric measurements on great white sharks of various lengths and managed to find a 93% linear correlation for a specific part of the shark's body and its total length. In non-science speak, this means by measuring a smaller section of the shark's body, this can be correlated at a high probability to its overall total length. Now, he can't tell me exactly where these parts of the body are because he's planning on publishing it in a journal and I can't blame him. Using a program known as Image J, David was able to take screenshots from the Guadalupe cage dive video with Dr. Hoyas Padilla and using his dive mask as a known length, which is 10 centimeters long, he was able to compare that scale to parts of the shark's body, namely the caudal fin and other sections that are currently under wraps. Doing so, he calculated that deep blue likely ranges from 491 to 565 centimeters long. And with his model, shows that there's a 93% chance that deep blue is slap bang in the middle at 528 centimeters. Pretty cool, right? Now, we do have to consider a few things here. The first is, of course, this is unpublished data, so it hasn't had to go through the rigorous scientific review process. And the second is that this footage is from 2013, so deep blue has probably grown a little bit since then. It would be interesting to see if David could use some of the footage from the 2019 sighting in Hawaii to update these measurements. Big thanks to David Burnby, by the way, for chatting to me about this. So Deep Blue is a big shark, there's no denying that, but is she really the biggest great white shark ever? Well, the short answer to that is no, she isn't. There are other white sharks out there that have been reliably and scientifically measured, like this one in Cuba who came in at 21 feet long. There's also the Malta white shark that was estimated to be somewhere between 21 and 24 feet long. Again, though, that's only an estimate, but it is probably bigger than Deep Blue. What Deep Blue might be, though, is the biggest great white shark to ever be caught on film. I think that's the key distinction here. We've got a good amount of footage of Deep Blue just swimming around doing her thing, whereas the other ones are either in scientific journals or are photographs of dead individuals. Sadly, that 2019 sighting of her seems to be the last one that we know of anyway. We're now five years down the line and there's been no recent sightings. Although saying that, there was about five years between her sighting in Guadalupe in 2013-2014 and the one in Hawaii in 2019. So maybe we're due a deep blue encounter pretty soon. Realistically, those are the two places that people are going to see her. Guadalupe in Mexico or Hawaii. So we've just got to keep our fingers crossed that someone happens upon her. Where do you guys reckon she is at the moment then? Do you think she's still alive? Is she, in your opinion, the biggest great white shark ever? What do you think of David Burnby's model estimates? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments. Please do give the video a like if you enjoyed it. But before you dash off, if you like today's video about great white sharks, then you're definitely going to want to click on this one right here. In this video, we have a look at the massive great white sharks in the Mediterranean, some of which, again, have been reported to be over six meters in length. And in this video, I will tell you where you're most likely to find them. So give it a watch here.